This year when big winter storm strikes, we are giving you a new way to track them. It's a groundbreaking new initiative that you're actually already familiar with during hurricane season. For the first time, the Weather Channel is proactively naming winter storms. A storm in its name. During hurricane season, named tropical systems become instantly recognizable to the public. We are continuing to track Tropical Storm Debbie. Bracing for Isaac. And by having a name, some of the deadliest, most destructive hurricanes become sinister, almost human. Oh, very cold is right. Winter storms can strike with similar life-affecting intensity. Oh, Jesus! Listen to that! And sometimes in surprising fashion, the Groundhog Day blizzard of 2011 forecast days in advance still stranded hundreds along Lakeshore Drive in Chicago. Wind gusts were between 60 and 70 miles an hour and visibility was at whiteout conditions. But except for coin phrases like Snowtober and Snowmageddon, winter storm coverage has rarely taken on a personality of its own. Until now, that is. This season, the Weather Channel is naming major winter storms. You heard it right. The Weather Channel will name winter storms this season. There will be a number of criteria that we will look at. Our most important, of course, are going to be snowfall accumulation, ice accumulation, and that combination of wind, which can produce significant impacts on the public. Selected by a committee of specialists and forecasters here at the Weather Channel, the list includes names like Athena, Draco, and Magnus. Names with an attitude. Winter weather certainly has an attitude and takes on a certain personality. So that's going to be our theme for this year. And even though it sounds gimmicky and fun, the reasoning behind it is anything but. Even though winter storms are different than hurricanes, they have their own share of disruptive and dangerous effects. And NOAA has a goal to become a more weather-ready nation. The Weather Channel is going to do our part here to raise the awareness of the public to reach that goal. History shows that naming storms allows for more effective communication, a model Europe has used for decades. And in retrospect, we've named storms during the winter time here in the U.S. We go back to last year with Snowtober as an example. Our winter weather expert, Tom Nizzle, has 30 years of winter weather forecasting experience. He was a meteorologist in charge at the National Weather Service in Buffalo. And he has developed forecasting tools that are now used nationwide. He is in Atlanta with Mike Bettis this morning. So, Tom, what, I think the criteria is the big question. Can we get some more details on that? Yeah, winter storms produce a variety of impacts. It's not as clear cut as tropical storms. And uh, we are going to look at objective parameters, uh, things like snowfall, ice accumulation, that combination of wind and snow. But there are other societal impacts we look at. The population that's going to be affected, even the time of day and day of week enter into the impacts that people are going to feel from major winter storms. Well, let's talk about when a storm will be named. They'll, they'll be named in, in advance of actually happening yeah, that's our plan. And, you know, Mother Nature is very fickle with winter weather. It doesn't let go of its secrets uh, very far in advance. We know that. Generally, we're going to be three days, 72 hours on in before a storm when we have really good confidence that that storm is going to produce those impacts. Okay. And Tom, will names get retired? Will we have a new list every year? You know, the hurricanes, uh, you know, they get retired and every six years they get rotated through. Sure, we'll develop lists on a yearly basis. Uh, you can see the list that we have up there for this year. Yes, they are what we call names with an attitude. Athena, by the way, the goddess of mathematics and every weather map that we've ever made is based on mathematics. So it's a great way to start. Um, I see a couple on there, like a Nemo. This is actually also a, a, a mythological, or is this a, is this a, a, a Greek god as well? Uh, is, yes, it's but, not the cartoon character, in fact, but it is. It goes to Greek gods and goddesses. So yes, there may be some confusion there, but it is an interesting list of names. The kids will have a lot of fun with that one, I'm sure, and they may be out there making Nemos in the snow instead of snowmen. Tom, we appreciate you being here.